the reason Jesus had to come in the first place was because the world was so corrupt and he had to change the standard. You know, mm -hmm. he had to change the standard for relationship with God. He changed the standard from, uh, from 613 laws to be faith in God and belief in what God can do. And that's what we're missing now. And every, every step parent has had to deal with that same situation. And the baby is born. And then, and then, apparently he's still sleeping with Sarah because she has a baby too, right. you know. Now he got two children living in his house by different baby mamas, you know. And, and so, but what we've done is, because we know Abraham to be the father of the faith and the man of faith and so on and so forth, we made him, you know, larger than life when Abraham is a good example of dealing with baby mama drama. That everyone brings something to the discussion. Certainly all of us down here at the bottom of the political, social, economic spectrum. You know, we're really all in this together, rather than at seeing the ways in which we might be divided or not on the same page. We ought to first begin to look at, okay, how are we alike? What are the kinds of things we share in common? Reverend Lawrence Livingston, I'm the pastor of uh, Mother African Union Church here in Wilmington, Delaware. The solution to much of what's in the world is faith in God, and we being Christian people, uh, we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in what is called the Christ event and what God did through Jesus Christ and, and the fact that God, that Jesus Christ died and was raised to life. We believe that God has that kind of power. If we, put our, if we put our hope and our faith in the things of man, whether they be political, whether they be social, whether they, they, they be economic, if we put our, uh, our, our, our hope in those things, those things are going to fail at some point, at some time or another. They're going to fail or they're going to become corrupt. And so what we as the people of God, uh, and it's certainly what has brought our people, African-American people, this far, it, was, it certainly wasn't the Emancipation Proclamation, it certainly wasn't the Constitution, it certainly wasn't, you know, the social status or the, the goodwill of white folk that have brought us as far as we've come. We've come as far as we've come, as, as the song says, by leaning on our faith in a just and righteous God. We see, we see people who um, are, are, are middle class, for example, who are often speaking out on behalf of the very wealthy, and they're not very wealthy themselves. And so, and so there's, a, there's a sense in which uh, what we need to do is, for all of these issues, we need to raise the level of the discussion and understand that everyone brings something to the discussion. Certainly all of us down here at the bottom of the political, social, economic spectrum. You know, we're really all in this together rather than at seeing the ways in which we might be divided or not on the same page. We ought to first begin to look at, okay, how are we alike? What are the kinds of things we share in common? I think we need to raise the level of the discussion. We need to begin to raise the level of the discussion. Right now, there's, there's not really uh, a discussion going on. It, it seems like we're kind of really accepting what we have. That's why the Bible is such a good book for us because when, when, we, when we see the people of the Bible, we see them dealing with the very same issues that, that we deal with. And as we tell the biblical story, see what we have done, uh, and, and as a matter of fact, the reason why some people cannot connect with the Bible is because we've, we've, made, we've made the Bible, uh, the biblical characters. We've kind of put them up on a pedestal and made them larger than light. Um, when you think about, for example, Abraham. Abraham, and God tells Abraham, I know you're old, but you and your wife are gonna have a child, you know. And, 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 and Sarah, first of all, she laughs about, oh, God is crazy, don't even pay attention to him. And she says, go in there and sleep with the maid. 
you know. I can't do anything for you. <laughs> you know, I can't do nothing for you. Go and do that. And Abraham goes and does it, you know. And a, and a baby is born. And then, and then, apparently he's still sleeping with Sarah because she has a baby too, right. you know. Now he got two children living in his house by different baby mamas, you know. You don't think that's like contemporary? And every, every step parent has had to deal with that same situation. Every person who understands what it means to be a step parent has dealt with the Abraham, Sarah, uh, Hagar, Ishmael situation, you know. And, and so, but what we've done is, because we know Abraham to be the father of the faith and the man of faith and so on and so forth, we made him, you know, larger than life when Abraham is a good example of dealing with baby mama drama. You know, I mean, he's a good example, but what we've done is we've, again, made him larger, larger than life, you know. But, but yeah, I mean, the same issues. The reason Jesus had to come in the first place was because the world was so corrupt and he had to change the standard, you know. Mm -hmm. He had to change the standard for relationship with God. And he changed the standard to be faith in what God can do. You know, and he changed the standard from uh, from 613 laws to be faith in God and belief in what God can do, and that's what we're missing now. That's what we're missing now because we 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 doubt it. We don't we don't think that belief in God. Oh, you know, I had you know I had a, a person one time in in, in, a, in a church tell me, you know. Um, you know, we were talking about the finances of the church and just basic stuff, paying an electric bill, you know, that, that kind of thing, you know. And they said, well, you know, um, you know, prayer is fine, but we got to find a way to pay these bills, <laughs> you know. And, and, and if he means prayer in a sense of um, while, while we're praying, we don't do anything else, you know. But if we're earnestly praying, first of all, it's going to require our belief. It's going to require that we believe in something beyond what we can see, feel, taste, and touch. It, it requires that. And then if we're earnestly praying, God's going to have us to do some things as well. You know, he's going to have us to work and, you know, and save and do some things, you know. But, but it requires faith. And that's, and that's what happened with the Jesus event. It, it changed from doing and all these things that we had to do, the 613 laws, to actually belief and being the people of God, being the children of God. Like, for example, one of the things that I pick on all the time is uh, we, we used to think that if we just could have midnight basketball, if we could just, you know, do midnight basketball, we'd have some things for people to do. Well, you know, midnight basketball worked for a minute, and then people were shooting each other up on the midnight basketball court, you know. But, but, but if their lives were transformed because of a late relationship with God, now not only do we have some people playing midnight basketball, but we have, we have some people who are not only transformed in their own lives, but helping other people be transformed as well. You know, and so, and so, and so, and so we get into doing things like midnight basketball rather than being who we are, which is being the people of God inviting other people to be the people of God as well. And I think that's where we are right now, particularly in the African American community. We're doing all kinds of stuff, you know. And even in the church, we are getting away from even bringing that message to, to African American people. I mean, we, we, we even, we even, we, we're, we're even afraid to, to, to be like Paul. Paul was um, a missionary to the Gentiles. Well, we, even as African Americans, are afraid to say we're missionaries to African Americans. <laughs> you know, folk are not doing that anymore. And so, um, and then we've got all this other stuff going on. We've got this naming and claiming stuff that's going on. And, you know, people, you know, trying to treat God like a bellhop and saying, God, do this for me. God, do that for me. You know, whereas we've come as far as we've come by faith in God.